So Adobe has just released the latest update to Lightroom CC Classic, and that's the 7.3 update. With that update, there are a couple of new or new-ish features that have been brought to the product. So in this video, I just want to demonstrate what they are and how you can use them. So we'll jump into Lightroom and take a look at those in action right now. Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom, where I show you how to take your photographs to the next level using Adobe Lightroom. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content that's added. Well, what's new in 7.3 of Lightroom Classic? Well, first and most importantly to many people is going to be a speed increase. Adobe have tweaked the overall software to make it faster. How much faster will probably depend upon the size of your catalogue and various other factors, but any speed increase is definitely a good thing. The second thing they've done is kind of brought up the profiles inside Lightroom. Now, if you've never used profiles, which many people don't, it always used to be at the bottom of the actual sort of stack on the right hand side. And this is where you can go through and you can apply a different profile to the photograph you've taken. And a profile is basically like a LUT inside your video editing software. In other words, a lookup table. And what it would do is it would apply a certain style that's contained either inside your camera or some things actually associated with the software Lightroom in this example and sort of give a starting point for your images. So what do I mean with these profiles? Well, if you ever notice when you took a photograph out of your camera, loaded it into Lightroom, the initial preview of that may have looked completely different to what you had when you start working in the develop module, different colors, different saturation, and so on. This is primarily because what Lightroom was doing is that initial preview was the JPEG file that's sort of saved alongside your actual RAW file. And then when you loaded it in, you would see in the RAW version. Well, what you could do with profiles is you could assign predefined kind of styles to the actual photograph in in the develop module. Well, they've kind of ramped that up in 7.3. If we open up the basics panel, you'll now see that we've got a little strip at the top that's new. This is basically, they've just moved this up and retweaked it from where it used to be, which is kind of down the bottom of this develop section in Lightroom. So what we've got now is we've got the ability to choose a profile by using this simple little toggle. And you can see we've got all the normal ones in there, which are like Adobe color, landscape portrait, and so on. These are sort of Lightroom lookup tables, if you will or profiles. What we also have though is the ability to sort of load in ones from our camera. Now these are going to be dependent upon the camera that you use. These have been shot with a Nikon D500. If you're using something like a Fuji, you'll have different profiles available alongside the standard Lightroom ones. Now to access those and take a little look, we can come down and choose browse or we can click on these little four sort of squares in the corner. If we click on that, That'll take us into our browser area. Now you can see we can break things down into all, so it'll show us everything that's available, or we can just choose the color options or the black and white options, and you can see that'll filter it out. What we can also do is change the way that we see these. At the moment, we're showing everything in the grid, so if I expand out the Adobe RAW, you can see there's the default ones that are part of Adobe Camera RAW itself, and you can see we can simply mouse over and see what they look like. So this is going to look very similar to presets, but it works in a slightly different way. You can also change the view. You can click on there and you can see we've got grid. We've got large, which takes us over to the second view. And finally, we've got list, which gets rid of all the previews completely and allows you to sort of go through by name and see a preview almost immediately on the main picture itself. So we've got the Adobe Raw ones. Below that, you can see we've got camera matching. If we open that up, now these are specific to the camera that you're using. So you've got camera flat, landscape, and so on. Like I say, this is where I've been using a Nikon D500. Let's put it back to the grid so we can see in a sort of colorful way. So you can see we can use these as great starting points. So we can come down, we can find one we think is gonna work for us. I'm gonna come back to this one and choose the landscape as a starting point for this sunset. Click on that, that now applies that to the actual image itself. And if we come back out, we close this down, you can see it says we're using the Adobe landscape. So that's how you assign those basic profiles, but we have some additional options available. If we come back up to this and we just come in and browse through, let's come down to something like the artistic. So these are not the Adobe RAW, they're nothing to do with the camera itself. These are specific profiles inside Lightroom. So let's expand that at the artistic and you can see we've got some kind of different images in there which will apply different kind of color tones and so on to the image that we're working with. So let's just say we like this artistic one. If I click on that, 
you now see we get an extra option which allows us to control the amount of this actual profile that will be assigned to our image. So if we find it's a little too heavy handed, we can dial that back just by reducing the amount and that'll sort of mix in that profile with the actual underlying image. Or if we find we want to push that even more so, we can take that up and really ramp up the effect on there right the way up to 200%. Obviously, it's a little heavy handed with this example, but you can see you can use it in a very similar fashion to if you've ever used something like Premiere or After Effects, where you apply a LUT, a lookup table, to assign a sort of specific color effect or effect to the video footage. You also get this amount slider that allows you to dial that back or increase it over its initial amount. And we're getting pretty much the same thing inside Lightroom now. So once we've done that, we can click close, that will apply that, and we can now come in and start making any other adjustments we want. So if we come down to the HSL, we can come in there, we can start making changes, we can do whatever we want to our image. Now if you like those particular effects, those profiles have been applied, you can simply come in and you can make those your favorite. So you can see whenever we take our mouse over anything that isn't currently a favorite, we get this little star in the top right hand corner, we can simply click on that, That'll add it to our favorites, and we come into our favorite section, and you can see now Artistic 04 is in there. Now, this is one of those things that it's a pretty cool starting point, and if you want to use this to sort of get a really good start for your image and then go further and tweak it, you could do that. Something that would be nice to see added in in the next iteration of Lightroom in 7.4 is the ability to sort of create and save your own, or at least import more into the sort of artistic area where you can get creative as opposed to being something to do with a specific camera or Adobe RAW itself. So that would be quite nice to see that feature in there. But that's basically how you use the profile file update inside Lightroom 7.3. So what else is new in the 7.3 update for Lightroom? Well, a couple of little tweaks, but nothing major over this new profile enhancement. You will note that we now have dehaze has been brought up into the basics panel and removed from the effects section, which kind of makes a lot more sense why it was hidden down in effects in the first place, I don't really know. But we now have the option to obviously start working with the dehaze as part of our presence setup, which like I say, just kind of makes a lot more sense. Apart from that, there's a couple of simple little things that go on under the hood. You've got the fact that we've got a sort of enhanced facial recognition uh, update to 7.3. But other than that and the speed increase, there's not really much else in here. But like I say, these profiles are quite useful. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content to the channel. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else you'd like to see covered in the future, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.